The most exciting thing to come out of Config 2024 is definitely Figma AI. I've been lucky enough to get access to the limited beta release and I'm here to give you a full overview of everything Figma AI can do. As usual, you have a link in the description for a community file if you want to follow along and you also have a link to sign up to Figma or upgrade your account. Let's jump in. We're in the file now and you'll also notice this new and beautiful Figma UI. This also came in the limited beta, so yours might not look like this yet, but you can get a little sneak peek of how it's going to look very soon for everyone. So this is what we can do with Figma AI according to Figma right now. They're saying these are the main things that are being released. I'm sure there'll be more in the future, but we can make designs, make prototypes, make images, replace content, change the tone of a text, um, and just many, many more. Let's deep dive together into our first AI feature and that is make designs. In order to reach all of the new AI features you just have to click command K on your keyboard or over here in the toolbar that's now in the bottom you have this actions menu. This is a combination of the quick actions menu, plugins, widgets and also all of the new AI stuff. So once you click on here you'll have a few kind of suggestions at the top and make designs is right here. Now all this is is put in a prompt and Figma AI will design it for you. I've put in some prompts here to kind of get you going if you are demoing this as well. I'm just going to copy the first one, paste it into here and click make it. It usually takes a second and then it's kind of thinking through it. It will let us know once it's done. Sometimes the last point is when it adds images and that can take a bit longer than the rest, but it is really, really quick. So let's have a look at the prompt and what it made. I've asked it to make a mobile app landing page for a fitness tracking app that integrates with wearable devices and provides personalized workout plans. Yep, that's pretty broad. And let's see what it did. It made an app, firstly, it's the size of a phone, which is great. It even gave it a name, FitTrack, morning yoga, daily steps, little tracker here, then a workout calendar, some nutrient intake, calories, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even put a little croissant there some weekly progress, weight progress, discover different workouts, and it gave us really good icons that match each. And we even have a tab bar. So firstly, this is incredible. Yeah, even just this is amazing. Now, what's really cool is when you do create a design, you have this thing at the bottom where you can change the kind of general theme. So I'll just zoom into the top to show you. What it will do if I select something different is it won't change any of the elements that are on the frame. All it would do is change how it looks. So you can see the, the fonts have changed, a bit of the spacing has changed, and obviously the colors. So you can look through these and see what kind of most matches the feel that you had in mind. I actually kind of like this one. And then you can make further changes by clicking make changes. So I can automatically switch it between light mode and dark mode. I think it's really great because some people just want everything to be in dark mode or everything to be in light mode. So it's good to have that. Then you can also change the tint color. So right now it's using a sort of green, but I can go straight into something else or I can even just select something or put in a hexadecimal that I know that I need. You can also change the roundedness of the corners. So obviously there's different levels of rounded corners in here, but kind of what is the general feel? Right now you can see it's quite high up, so everything is pretty round. But if I change it to square, you see everything has kind of gone a bit more square. Obviously these stay circle because they're a circle thing, but, uh, but you can see that like all of the corners here are just really straight. And that's really great that you can control it for the entire page at once. Um, the next thing is spacing, so same thing. Right now it's pretty spaced out, but let's say I wanna make it a lot more compact. You see, it kind of squished everything together and it sized it accordingly. And I can also just change the font and I can change it by title or by body. So let's say just titles I wanna change and then I wanna change the body to this. Yeah, so you can control a few different things just from that make changes. You can also change the prompt, which is really important. So anytime that you design anything using a prompt, the name of that frame will be whatever the prompt was. So you can see this is a really kind of long name, but then it kind of keeps it for you. So if I select this and I click on make changes, I can say, um, let's say add um, water intake. So you can see that it's created it for me. I might not like this. I might want to change a few things. Maybe the image is a bit excessive, but it's a great starting off point. One more thing that's important to note is even if we're at the stage where we actually made this design a really long time ago, we can still go back and do that make changes. So if I select this frame, go into the actions menu and then write make changes. Once I select that, you see that this pop-up comes back up again and it's still sort of connected to it. So I can still make all of these changes and change the prompt, change from light mode to dark mode. So you don't lose that even if you did lots of other stuff since creating this. 
Figma do give us some guidelines on how they would suggest we write a prompt to get the best designs. They recommend to start off with a product type. Are we designing for an app? Or are we designing for a website? Then they suggest to give the use case. Is this a product page, a checkout page? What, what exactly is this? And finally, give a description. Tech store, news company, toy store, flower store, anything like that. And another thing to note about Make Designs is that at this moment, they can only make a single screen and they don't really keep the context of the previous one they made. If you're trying to make a flow, you will kind of have to use a similar prompt for each one and maybe say to it, this is step one of the process and then this is step two. It won't remember the previous one that it made. It is working from a set library, so it will pretty much look very similar and you can utilize it. Moving on to AI feature number two, and that is Make prototype. Now this is a super exciting one, but it does require a tiny bit of effort from our point. I know really sad, but we do need to work a little bit in order to get it to work for us. I have these screens here and yes, Figma AI did make them for me. I had to do a lot of tweaking after, but I think they're, they're pretty good as a basic thing. And I'm going to ask Figma to prototype them for me. So I'll select all of these screens. And what Figma do recommend is that we help it out with the naming. So I've named each one of these frames, the onboarding landing, step one, step two, step three, and overlay. So I'm going to go command K to get into my actions menu and then write make prototype. It's going to take a second. You see that now it's noodling and not working. So let's see what it comes up with. Great. Now, once it's done that, it's not going to save it automatically. We see that it's only done a few noodles. It's kind of gone from get started to step one, to step two, to step three, using the next. And it's it's kind of asking me, does this look good? Do you want to preview it before you kind of agree to it? So I'm going to shift and space in order to preview it. And let's have a look. Get started takes us to here. Next takes us here. And then next takes us here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So in order to keep it, I can command and enter or I can just click on keep it. Now you will notice that a few things didn't connect. And this goes back to what I kind of said that Figma suggest. We need to help Figma AI with the layer naming. So for example, we have this back button, but it's not been connected. And if you look at it in the layers panel, it's called icon. Figma isn't really looking. It's looking through its data, right? So it, it doesn't see what button this is. All it sees is that it's called icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these back buttons, and then I'm going to rename them together to back button. So that's the first thing. And then I do have this overlay, but how is Figma going to know where is this overlay coming from? So this is a little overlay explaining, let's say, why we need their weight and height during the onboarding. And I want to connect it to this button. So I'm going to call this button why we need this overlay. I'll copy that name and I'll name this exactly the same thing, why we need this overlay. Let's try again. So if I select everything, go into the actions menu, make prototype. So you can build a make prototype on top of a make prototype. It's not going to cancel out the previous prototyping. And you can see it thought for a second and look what it did. Yay, it did exactly what we wanted it to do. All of the back buttons now have a back action on them. And you'll notice that it didn't connect it to the previous page. It just did a back, which kind of works because this is a linear flow. And then it also connected the overlay. And we can see because of the visual of it, if I select this, you can see as well, it's opening an overlay. Also, can we pause for a moment to look at this amazing new prototyping UI? Like, look how pretty this is. So gorgeous. Moving on to feature number three, and that is replace content. Now, this one is one that I was so, so, so excited to see. I literally, when they were showing a joke on Fig, I went, <gasps> And I stayed like that for a good five minutes because this is so impressive. So in the file, I have this sort of card here that has a bit of information on it. It's a strawberry milkshake, says how much it costs, what's the calories, a numbering, and then a short description. And yes, Figma did write this description. So it's inside of an auto layout. You can see the black box here is an auto layout. It's also inside of another auto layout, but that's just for the visuals. So when they were demoing this, they also kind of showed one more thing that I think got a bit buried, but it's actually so cool. And that's called drag to duplicate. So I'm going to select this card and just command D to duplicate it. Now, when I select the parent frame, so the auto layout that it's in, Figma AI is noticing that I have two elements that are the same inside of this auto layout. So this little buddy is gonna appear. If I hover over it, you can see it says duplicate. Now I'm gonna zoom out a bit to show you. If I drag, 
it's going to duplicate that card more and more times. Almost like Excel in a way, which is weird to compare Figma and Excel, but I feel like this is kind of similar. So it just duplicated that for me. And I think this already in itself is an amazing feature. Now let's look at replace content. So I'm selecting all of my elements now, and you can see over here that it says kind of replace content. It's noticing that I have a selection that has repeating elements inside of it. Once I tap on that, you see what it does. It kind of keeps the top one as the context. It's the top one is going to teach it what the other ones should have inside of them. And then it's gradually going to add in information into the rest. So you see it noticed it was a milkshake. So now I have a chocolate brownie sundae, a vanilla bean frappuccino, caramel macchiato. And um, sometimes the auto layouts get a bit broken. So let's fix that. There we go. And you can see that it's changed everything. So it's changed the numbering. So 01, 02, 03. It's changed the amount it's changed the calories and it's changed the description and the title and the description also matches the title so if this one is vanilla bean it's going to talk about vanilla bean let's fix this one as well if this one is a macchiato it's going to talk about the macchiato yeah so the description and the title will be tied together and just like before we can make changes as well so if i click on make changes i can describe what changes i want to make like like add a decimal point to the price and you'll see that it kind of understood what I meant by that. I was a bit nervous. I was in my head, I was thinking I'm probably, it's probably not gonna do it, but look, it did it, okay? And again, yes, the auto layouts are a bit ruined. So I'll just gonna do that quickly and then you'll be able to see it. Voila, okay, you yeah, see? And it just, it just added it. I think that's really, really incredible. It even understood the context that these are all prices, right? It's really, really smart. <laughs> Moving on to our next AI feature and that is rename layers. Now I have a frame in here that has lots and lots of layers in it. I'm just going to click on enter so you can see what I did is I just renamed because they had some naming. So I renamed all of the layers to just numbers and Figma does give us a bit of a caveat when it comes to renaming layers. It says that if there is an intentional naming, meaning I renamed something, Figma is not going to rename that layer for me. I think that's pretty good because it means it's not going to override anything that you've already decided on. I'm going to select this big frame go into my actions panel and then select rename layers. Now it's gonna say nothing needs renaming because I named everything, but I can override myself and say rename anyway. And now you'll see the magic happen. So I think it's also so great that they made it it's such a pretty animation that kind of does this for us. Um, and you can see it's still going, it's still like rewriting everything. It's doing it in such a pretty way. And it's renaming 91 out of 91. And I think it looks really good. So let's have a look at what it did for us. I'll make this a bit wider so we can see it. So for example, if I select, I'm just gonna close everything, look at my main frame and then enter. You see, it already gave things really meaningful names. So it says forecast container, maximum temp text, current day forecast, hourly forecast, locations container. Let's look at this current day. If I go inside, I've got current day header, day forecast body, weather graphic. That's nice. And then day temperature container. Inside of it, I've got current temp, container weather. So it's really understanding context. It's really looking at what's actually there. What is the information inside of it? And I think that's just remarkable and super, super, super great. Let's move on to our next few AI features. And those are all the text tools. So with the text tools, we have a few options. We have rewrite, we have translate, and we have shorten. Let's start off by looking at rewrite. So you have a few of these in the design file and yes, Figma AI did select these images and yes, Figma AI did select the names and the descriptions. So what I'm going to do is just select the first one. So let's say this blissful bouquet, I'll go into my actions panel and then go to rewrite this. It's giving me a few suggestions. It can say, make it shorter, more plain spoken, more casual, replace with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ask it to just make it more casual and then rewrite. It usually does this pretty quick actually. And you can see already feel the pure joy with our blissful bouquet, a beautiful mix of delicate blooms, blah, 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 blah. Let's do this again, make changes. Let's actually say now, make it, make it really formal and then rewrite. Let's see what happens. Oh, experience the unadulterated delight of our exquisite arrangement. Yeah, so it's doing just a, a better word choice to make it more formal, more casual, stuff like that. Already super cool. Now for shorten specifically, we also just have an action that's shortened. So if I just type in shorten, you see there's a little scissors. It says first select a text layer. So I'm going to select which text layer I want to shorten. 
and then yeah it does that for me which I think is pretty cool let's look at translate so I'm going to select this whole card that has some text boxes in it click on my actions menu and then translate to now with translate there aren't all of the languages in the world on here now but there's a good few already here that we can look at um let's let's go with one i'm gonna go with italian and then you'll notice that it kind of goes through the whole um of the page and translates it doesn't just translate one of the sections so i'm not going to pretend to pronounce this but it translated this and if you speak Italian please let me know if this feels correct to you. It can also translate to different characters that are the Latin characters that we're used to so if I translate and go to let's say a Thai for example it's going to use the Thai alphabet and it will just fit in there. One thing that I did notice you'll see that Arabic is an option on the translation list but it doesn't flip your designs so let's just try that real quick. I'm going to go into here and translate and click on Arabic so it will change everything to Arabic, but it's not going to realign your text boxes or swap your design for you to be matching for a right to left environment. So that's one thing that you do need to do on your own. Maybe one day in the next update, it will allow for uh, kind of a whole right to left switch of your designs. Moving on to our next batch of AI features, and those are the image tools. With the image tools, we do have two tools that we can use. One is make image and one is remove background. In order to make an image, we do need to write in a prompt and Figma do give us a bit of guidance about that. It's very similar guidance to the one we got before for making a design. So it says to start off with the medium. So do we want it to be photorealistic? Do we want it to be line art graphic? Do we need this to be a logo? Kind of what are we looking for? Then continue on with the element. So say I want a cake, I want an object, I want many people, I want a landscape. Like what exactly are we looking for? And then you can add in some styling, like I want you to use blue or I want to use really dark lighting or add in some smoke, I don't know, stuff like that that has to do with the styling. So let's test it out. So I'm going to select this uh, background here that is already prepped for an image. So you see the fill is image, but there's no image there. I'll go into my actions menu and go to make an image. So let's make a red velvet cake. So I'm going to say a realistic uh, uh, red velvet cupcake sitting on a table and make it. So what it's going to do is it's going to produce four images for us and then we can decide which one of them we want to use. Because I've already selected an image, it's going to do that on top of it. If I wasn't selecting anything, it would just produce a square image for us. So this is lovely. You can see I have my cupcake here and if I click on the different ones, it will just swap between them. I can also pull out any of these and just drop them in and sometimes they will be resized. So let's try another one and give a bit of a different prompt. Now there is another way to get to generate image. You don't have to do it through the action menu. You can also, if you are filling an image already, click on swap image and then upload a new one or generate a new one. So I'll generate a new one. And I want a cartoon vanilla bean cupcake. Let's make that. Yeah, so that's really cute. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, I'm gonna make one more cupcake. And you don't always have to give it all of the information. So for here, I'm just gonna say chocolate fudge cupcake. I'm not gonna give it the styling or the medium that I want it to use. And let's see what it produces for us. Usually it goes with more realistic things if it can. Uh, so let's see, yeah, you see that's super realistic. It hasn't really made the fourth one yet, but I'm kind of already happy with this. So let's have a look at the new feature, which is remove background as well. If I select this image, go into my actions menu and type in remove background. It's going to think for a second and then it's just going to remove the background for me as simple as that. And you can see it's done a really, really good job at it. One really good thing that I really appreciate as well is you can see in the design panel, it's kept the original image in there as the original fill and just hidden it and then put the one that's has the background removed on top of it so we can create pretty cool things here like for example I'm just going to drag that in between so you can see I can just do something like this or or kind of do whatever I want really but I think it's really really useful that it splits those up for us and doesn't just eliminate the original and that is that. There is one more AI feature that I haven't shown in this video and that is visual search. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I just can't get it to work. So I don't have anything to show with it if I don't understand it myself. But hopefully once I kind of play around with this more, I'll master it and I'll come with a video to show it to you. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment. Let me know what other videos you like to see. What were you most excited about with config? Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.